So hello, welcome to the video about the syslog receiver sensor. PRTG's syslog receiver sensor works quite differently from most of the other sensors in PRTG. The other sensors are very active polling sensors, that is, they send out queries to, to target devices, they get responses, and they send the responses to the core server for analysis. The syslog receiver sensor, on the other hand, is a passive sensor. It does not actively go out and poll devices. Rather, it sits and waits for the devices to send information to it. What this means is that the very first step in configuring a syslog receiver is to configure your end devices to send the syslogs to PRTG. Unfortunately, I can't show you how to do that because it's different for every device, um, but it's usually fairly straightforward. You usually need to put in the IP address and maybe the port of the target syslog server, which in this case will be PRTG. So to configure PRTG to receive the syslog messages, you need to set up a syslog sensor, and I'll do that right now by going to sensors and add sensor. And I'll put it on my probe device. And the type of sensor I'm looking for is syslog. There it is, the syslog receiver. I'll give it a new name. This is my video syslog receiver. For now, I'll leave the defaults as they are. I'll come back and explain them in a minute. First of all, we'll just add the sensor. There it is. Now, when the sensor is very first added, it's still gray because it's still initializing itself. Uh, while it's initializing, I can explain you have a, a fundamental decision to make when you create a syslog receiver sensor, and that is at which level in your tree do you want to put the sensor? You can either put it on the probe device and then it will receive messages from all devices that are on that probe, or if you'd like to, you can put it on an individual device and then it will receive the messages only from that one device. You can also put multiple sensors on multiple devices or you can even have one device with a whole bunch of syslog sensors with different filter rules on them. The, the granularity that you work with is entirely up to you. So let's wait for my sensor to initialize. Okay, it has a few messages coming in. Let's look at what's happening. We see here the syslog messages that are arriving. These happen to be from one of our productive firewalls. And we have an error message. We've had too many errors come in. If you look here at the severity, we have a bunch that are severity 6 and a few of them that are severity 1. It happens to be the severity ones that are triggering this alarm condition, but let me show you why. Let me go back to those settings that we ignored and look at them in detail. Your choice of settings for the sensor are, okay, you can put tags on. By default, it has a syslog sensor tag. You can change the priority like with any sensor. It listens by default on port 514, that is the syslog default, and you can also decide here how long it should keep the messages. Um, you need to be a little bit careful here because if you have a lot of syslog messages coming in, then you're going to fill your disk very quickly. So consider carefully how long you need the messages. Then, and this is the most important part of the sensor, you define filters. By default, the filters are anything that comes in with severity 0 to 6 will be included. That means it will be recorded and saved by PRTG and considered for further processing. You can, if you want, exclude certain things, like you could exclude messages from one particular machine or from one particular subnet or um, particular severities. The options that you have for all of these filters are available here. I know you can't really read them in the video, but when you um, create the sensor yourself, you'll be able to read them. You can filter based on source IP, the facility, the severity, the host name, tags, the app name, the process ID, the message ID, the message itself, and various substrings in the data. Then, by default, PRTG will generate a warning for severity 4 and an error for severity 0 to 3. Uh, let's look for a second at what those severities are. So in syslog, there are seven predefined severity levels that are standardized for syslog. Levels 0, 1, 2, and 3 are all some kind of error state, ranging from emergency down to error. Severity level 4 is a warning, and that will generate a warning in the syslog receiver sensor. Severity levels 5 and 6 are informational. They will be included by the sensor, so they'll get recorded to disk, but they won't generate an error or a warning. And severity level 7 is only for debugging, so it's not included by default in the PRTG sensor. 
in the example we saw, let me go back to the data. We saw, okay, severity 6 is informational. It's not terribly critical, but we do have some critical ones with severity 1 coming in, and those are what's generating this error message. Now, once we have an error message defined, if we want to get notifications about it, if we want to hear by email or SMS that there's a problem, then we need to define a notification. So if I go in the notification, by default it's inheriting from the parent, but for the demo today I'd like to see that a little bit more concrete. Here you can define the notification. So for example, when the sensor is down for, I'm going to say zero seconds, I want to see things right away, then as a reaction I can send an email to a dummy email address that I've created. And I'm not going to escalate. The one email will be enough. When the condition clears, then I would also like to see an email to that same email address. And save. Now, when I go back to my sensor, and I see new messages coming in all the time, I can look at the live data to see what messages have come in over the last 24 hours, 30 days, or 365 days. The messages themselves that come in are logged here under the Messages tab, and you can filter based on the source, the message, host name, timestamp, severity, the tag, the facility, the app name, the PROC ID, message ID, and data. These are the same fields that you have as options when you build a filter. And if I look in the log, I see that it has started doing notifications for me. That means if I go look at my email, I ought to see some messages have come in. There we go. Hmm? My syslog receiver has sent me an email message saying that the syslog is down and a little bit of extra information about what the log messages were that caused the sensor to go down. Now the way the sensor works is you had those filters defined in the settings and you have a specific polling period defined. What the sensor does is it waits one polling period and it looks at what messages have come in during that polling period that match the filters. And if messages have come in that match the filters, then it goes into error or warning state if it needs to. If no messages have come in that match the filter, then it's green. The next polling period, it does the same thing again a new. So it looks just at that polling period. Have any messages come in that match the filters? Yes or no? Do I need to be in a warning or error state? This can be a little bit confusing because what can happen is that a message comes in that triggers an error and the sensor goes red. But the message maybe only comes in once. In the next polling period, there were no more of those messages, so the sensor goes green again because there were no messages that matched the filter. However, the problem that caused that first message is potentially still a problem. We don't actually know if it has been fixed or not. So we recommend very much, please use notifications with the syslog receiver. Then you will get an email when there's a problem and you'll be able to tell from your email that the problem is there, even if the sensor itself is looking green again. So that was what I wanted to say about the, the syslog receiver sensor. Um, I encourage you to look at the other videos that are on our website. And if you have any questions either about syslog or about any other features in PRTG, please write us an email at any time. The address is support at pestler.com. Thanks and bye.